Hey everyone, welcome to another episode on the AI Guide where we're making AI human. What does that mean? That means that we focus on the human impact of this technology, the very significant human impact that is on the near horizon now. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but before we do, Click those links below. Get my book on Amazon, The Beginner's Guide to AI, A Short History of AI, and also Current Impact on 10 Different Industries. And the other link is free resources. These resources will help you learn more about AI than we can do in these short videos. The resource is free. Everything in the resource is free. And... We're trying to help you prepare for the AI wave that's coming. And of course, in every video, we do that specifically by talking about what jobs will be impacted and what will not. So thanks so much for tuning in, and here we go. So once again, we have to thank the group ID Tech X out of the UK uh, for today's story. And this story is about robots. We're going to do a two-part series on robots. Uh, this is part one. Part two will be a specific AI example that will drive robotics. Uh, the AI will help make robotics better and better. But this first one is really about where are we in terms of robots and automation? And uh, so the title of the article from ID TechX is Robotics and Automation in 2022. Can they be a hedge to recession? So uh, long story short, the economy most experts believe is headed into recession as we're in December of 2022 and getting ready to enter 2023. In fact, they expect the recession to hit in the second half of 2023. So that's why they say uh, what they're about to say in this article. Robotics and automation have significantly revolutionized how people work and live across a number of industries. And of course, we've talked a lot about that here. With the increasing likelihood of a global economic recession in 2023, by the way, some parts of the globe are already in recession. Uh, the EU and UK are in recession already. And we here in the U.S. had a technical recession um, a couple of quarters ago, but not really a recession. Not, uh, it, it was a very odd thing historically, which I won't get into too much time. Uh, so with the increasing likelihood of a global ep economic recession in 2023, many industries are struggling with increasing manufacturing costs, such as labor and raw materials, and maintaining their profit margins. The robotics and automation sector provide a solution to mitigate the issue by reducing operational costs and increasing production efficiency. So you can already tell where this is headed. Prepare yourselves is the message. Now, it's not as bad as, as you might think, and the reason why we have talked about several times before, but this time you're hearing it directly from experts who survey every aspect of the field of AI constantly. Uh, while industrial robots have been popular for many years, they bring social economic concerns such as manual labor replacement and high upfront costs. And we've talked about that before. The robots they use in the auto sector are completely separate from people operating because they're dangerous. You cannot be in the same area where these robots are assembling car bodies and stuff like that. Uh, and they're super expensive. However, we've talked about what's coming that is going to change all this. Collaborative robots, cobots, will be in their prime within the next 10 years. Why? They identify three drivers for this trend. 
Driver one, low capital barrier and fast return on investment. And I mentioned to you guys on a prior video my personal experience with this, which was we looked at a robot to feed a machine in one of the factories of the company I was working for. And at the first time we looked at it, it was about $125,000 for the robot and all the support equipment that made it work. But it did work uh, to put parts in the machine so that the machine would then finish the parts. However, I told you that three years later, that same robot had dropped to $50,000 from $125,000. So that's exactly what they're talking about here. Uh, cobots share a workspace with humans as opposed to industrial robots. Cobots are typically smaller, slower, and cheaper than industrial robots. Thanks to these features, many small and medium enterprises with limited budgets have started to adopt cobots in recent years, and we've talked about that. So what does that mean? It doesn't mean full job displacement, but it means you are going to have to be computer literate and able to run this robot. Um, driver two, reshoring and increasing demand for productivity upgrades. Ever since the occurrence of COVID, Global supply chain disruption has been a massive pain point across the globe. Um, many companies have started to seek local suppliers. The problem is many of these local suppliers are small and have limited manufacturing capacity that does not meet the demand of large companies. Therefore, many lo local suppliers have started seeking factory automation to boost their productivity. So this makes a lot of sense, right? If if, for example, certain production processes are being reshored from China principally uh, to the United States, then they have to find local suppliers and these local suppliers have to be able to meet the needs of these huge corporations that moved all their manufacturing to China. Uh, driver three, calling to bring humans back to factories and creating a human-centric working environment. So now we're going to talk about how robots and cobots will differentially impact different parts of the world. Here in the U.S., because of the way corporations run with their allegiance entirely to shareholders these days, job disruption will be very significant. However, not all of the world looks at things the same way. For example, in 2020, the European Commission proposed its Industry 5.0 plan. Compared with the Industry 4.0 plan, um, Industry 5.0 focuses more on human-robot collaboration and bringing people back to production lines. One of the fundamental concepts of Industry 5.0 is the human-centric working environment where machines need to adapt to human operators. And that's exactly what cobots are. So check this out. This is going to blow your mind. Despite the drivers to cobot adoption, cobots are still at their formative stage. And the market share of cobots is less than 10% right now, which we've talked about. I've told you small and mid-sized businesses have been slow to automation because of the cost involved. Well, this is what's going to blow your mind. <laughs> ID TechX believes the market will start to take off within the next two years thanks to smart factory proposals and Industry 5.0. ID TechX believes that the market size of cobots will exceed U.S. 100 billion 20 years from now. Now, 100 billion industry is huge. That will rank it up there in the top, I'm going to say, 2025 industries in the entire world. That's the scale of what's coming in the next 20 years, which we've talked about repeatedly. Uh, increasing market in cobots presents significant opportunities. Um, they go on to say that uh, in addition to cobots and factories, 
There's a whole other segment called service robots. Service robots will automate many daily tasks. And personally, I'm looking forward to one of these, which we'll talk about in a second. A service robot is a machine or robot that performs useful tasks not involving industrial automation. Service robots can be utilized to automate a broad spectrum of industries from logistics and delivery, which we've talked very much about, cleaning and disinfection, which we mentioned that during COVID, a lot of the big buildings like airports, malls, etc., started introducing these cleaning and disinfecting robots. Um, are expected to lead the market in foreseeable future thanks to their high TRL, which is technology readiness level, and I'll do a separate video on that soon, and large addressable markets, meaning there's a lot of business opportunity in those markets. By contrast, social robots, meaning ones you talk to, kitchen and restaurant robots, agricultural robots, and underwater robots are still in the early commercialization stage because of regulations and high technical barriers. Well, in agriculture, I did a video very, very recently that talked about a breakthrough, uh, sub-millimeter application using AI of pesticides and fertilizer. So that's a massive breakthrough in agriculture. So I think that they're not current on agriculture. Um, it goes, <clears throat> sorry, um, that's why I have the water. It goes on to say that, um, that, uh, you know, one of the barriers to social robots is regulation because there's a lot of pushback against AI enabled robots that can mimic human beings because that makes people very uncomfortable, right? We've all seen the Terminator. Um, so robots by de definition are machines that should not have emotions. However, social robots are designed to mimic the emotions of their users. Um, now social robots right now are, are targeted in very specific markets like people with disabilities and stuff like that. Um, but will spread rapidly. We've talked about that. Now, the final mind blower here. Autonomous mobile robots will experience an 86-fold growth in the next 20 years. That's 86 times the sales volume of now. Again, another massive, massive business on the immediate horizon. That's why in that recent video, uh, when I talked about uh, the pizza delivery robot, big companies, big, very successful companies are jumping into this because they know the car business is going to go down, which is the business that Magna is in. And these delivery robots are the business of the future, meaning the next 20 years. Uh, so they identified three types of these autonomous mobile robots. Uh, there, there's ones called that, which are fully AI enabled. There's automated guided vehicles and grid-based automated guided carts um, and mobile case picking ro robots. Between, tw in two years, the market for these robots grew between 21 and 70 percent in two years. So this is the, the iceberg is starting to appear above the surface of the water, and we're in the Titanic. Uh, this is driven by the flexibility and scalability that robots provide amid a shortage of labor resources. So the great resignation, a lot of people have refused to do quote unquote shitty jobs anymore. Um, and there's labor shortages, bad labor shortages in food delivery, in, in um, taxi driving, in truck driving. These are hard jobs. Some of them don't pay well, some do, uh, but uh, they have a high burnout rate and people are getting to the point where they don't want to do them. 
The article finishes up by going on to say, independent autonomy will be a crucial factor impacting the market trends as it determines the overall level of flexibility and scalability of mobile robots. According to ID TechX research, autonomous mobile robots without the need for navigation supporting infrastructure will reach the largest market size in 20 years, 86 times the current market. So if you needed ever needed a clear warning, this is it. And we just talked about all the industries that are going to be impacted by this. What we did not talk about in terms of robots is healthcare, maybe with cleaning and disinfecting, but not patient care. That is a very long time out in the future. Why? People want to be interacting with people, especially when they're sick. That's why those jobs will persist. Home health aides, nurses, um, etc. So uh, these are global experts in technology, and that is their update on robotics and automation. Plenty of food for thought there. We'll finish uh, this two-part series next time with a specific case of AI that will enable a robotic future. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye.